The first thing we do with seasons of opportunity is that we use them to build capacity. Your first assignment during seasons of plenty, during seasons of abundance, during seasons of ease is capacity. Second Kings chapter 4, when you read from verse 1 to 6, this was a story of the wife of the sons of the prophet. Remember, the, it took the union of the vessel and the oil for profits to come oil alone does not give profit it is oil with plenty vessels that is equal to profit if you have great oil and small vessel you will still be poor the woman had oil in her house but the vessel was small when you have seasons of opportunity seasons of health seasons of youthfulness seasons where your destiny helpers are around maximize those seasons to build capacity spiritual capacity intellectual capacity use these seasons to build capacity are we learning so that's the first thing we do with seasons of opportunity number one build capacity your prayer life your word life your time with god because you see there are responsibilities that leadership of all sorts will bring into your life that may not allow you the convenience to do certain things with the liberty you had to do before again hallelujah number two what do you do with these seasons the seven your seven years of abundance your seven years of fatness the second thing you do is build quality relationships build quality relationships that's what we do with these seasons build quality relationships ecclesiastes chapter 4 please let's hurry up We'll read from verse 9 9 to 12 ecclesiastes chapter 4 build relationships yes what the bible says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor so the two people must not be lazy the bible says two of them have labor is that true it says for if they fall one will lift up his fellow but woe to him that is alone when he falleth for he hath not another to help him up uh-huh again if two lie together they have heat but how can one be warm alone 12 and if one prevail against him two shall withstand him and a threefold cord is not easily broken can i tell you during your seasons of plenty your seven years of plenty that is the time to pray in the spirit and say lord bring destiny relationships to my life bring quality people who love me because of me quality people who are not just looking for money or titles our world is full of people who will prey on you and climb you like ladders to where they want to go you need quality people can i tell you this woe betides a man who is full of men but does not have relationships how many people today have stepped into their dark days and their dark moments and there's almost no one look at jesus your jesus my jesus when jesus was on his way to god got a question where were all the people who received miracles from his crusade those who had five thousand um, um, um five loaf and two fish where were they where were all the women who were singing his praises hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord where were even his disciples they ran away. Paul so ran away. Paul called a small girl woman because he was running away from Jesus. I mean Peter. Peter. You look like you have no, 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 no. I've not been with him. It was only John that stayed when Jesus was on the cross. Do not let circumstances choose your relationships. Choose your relationships with understanding. 
sit down with the word and with the spirit of wisdom and ask yourself what kind of destiny do i desire ah woe betides any man when you are in moments i've taught you this about relationships that you are in dark days and seasons in your life and there is nobody to call you to say i hear you just lost this election but we are standing by you we love you genuinely i hear you just lost money one billion naira just disappeared can i tell you if you need food provided i am alive your children will not beg for food i will keep paying their school fees till you recover can i tell you not everybody is greedy there are sincere people they, they are hard to find but pay the price to find them Let me ask you an honest question. The first time I taught this message, I asked that question and I want to ask it now. Is there someone right now, as you're looking at me, is there someone in your life you can honestly call for help no matter what time of the day or night and they will get up and respond to you? If you don't have such a person, your life is in danger now. I am telling you. Apostle, I am, uh, what they call that thing? Where people like you, um, they like you, uh, oh dear, I can't remember it now. No, no, it's not photogenic. Photogenic is camera. Yes. Yes. Psycho fans. I, there's something in me that makes everybody like me. Think again. Let me tell you. Think again. Men are selfish. When you look like a ladder, you will see many of them. Let them just see you looking like a ladder. And here they come, ready to climb messlessly. There are many of us here right now. The reason why you are almost dying of depression is because there is nobody in your life who can stand and say, let's pray. I came to spend the whole weekend with you because I hear you were bereaved. I canceled all my programs. And you say, why did you do that? Because of love. To let you know there are still genuine people genuine people are scarce they are like gold pay the price to find them early is someone learning now i tell you if you have the wealth of men genuine men who love jesus and love you you are wealthy indeed yes there are people today who may not have connections they may not have educational qualifications but god has honored them with the gift of men they can call and say please i don't mean to insult you but there is someone who is sick and they say for you i'm on my way coming do you know your name can be a key or a padlock your lifetime is what decides it there are people today who have changed their names because if they ever tell people they are carrying that son name they'll say which one mention the name again that other one where was he in 1971 to 1975? Oh, he walked with railway. Go out of my office. And you, you just refresh a painful wound. And something that was a key becomes a padlock. I forbid your name from becoming a padlock. Is someone learning tonight? Build relationships, powerful relationships. I may not have the school fees to pay for my child. And someone says, over my dead body, I remember what you did for me in 1981. And I vow that for as long as I'm alive, there are people who have gone to be with the Lord today, but they went to be with the Lord smiling because they saw people standing before them that they knew will make sure their children don't cry. And they say, I will live in peace because I know that someone will be there to defend me. There are people who, it's not the fear of death that makes them cry. It's the fact that they know that if, they, if, they, if their breath ceases today, they will shred their entire names and their families into pieces. Please like what I'm sharing. I'm teaching you by the Spirit. This is what we gain when we come to the house of God. So, all the people you are insulting in your office because you have money all the people you are insulting around for us young people who are insulting fathers insulting everybody 
I give you a, I don't know if it's a good or bad news, but it's a news, a serious news that one day, one day, you will reap from that seed you are sowing. There are people today who are not supposed to have certain jobs. But just because they mentioned this, you know this man? Let me tell you. In so, 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 so years, and a job interview becomes a long story. And after you talk to the person, you say, by the way, where are you staying? Says, I honestly, as I'm, I just came to Abuja, I don't even know the name of the area where I am. And the person says, go and get him a place at my cost. And you see the person and say, I hope you are doing things correctly. See, I'm reaping from the benefits of someone's relationship. Be careful how you treat people. Be careful how you treat people. Be careful how you treat people. One day the person you are looking down, you will open the door of an office and see him sitting down. And you will say, welcome, you can be seated because from here you are going to prison. Straight. Straight. Give him minerals. As soon as you are done, you are going to prison straight. I know we are laughing, but I hope we are hearing what God is saying because God is speaking. There are many people today who are surrounded by men and women who can help them. Can I tell you, when you find out that a man is close to many helpers and yet nobody is helping him, don't be too quick to conclude that the helpers are bad people. Ask questions. What happened? What happened? Why are you surrounded by people who can open doors for you and yet everyone ignores you? Could it be that you are reaping the harvest of the seeds you so gallantly sowed? I made up my mind that I do not want in my lifetime let it never be that one day you mention Joshua Selman and someone says, no, I intended blessing you, but now that you have mentioned this name, walk out of here. No. Politicians, one day you will not be in that office. Men of God, whether Jesus comes or you meet him, in any case, you are going to move. That for sure. Father, mother, the baby you now treat anyhow will be the one to take care of you in old age when seasons change. Young boy, learn to be responsible now. They will not give you money any, every day. A day will come, your father will say, at your age, I was already out. Go out of my house now and prove, make full proof of your ministry. Maximize relationships. Are we learning? So I, I, I asked a question. That was what led me into this discussion. Is there somebody in your life today who you can call and he can stand with you in prayer? Is there someone in your life today who you can open the secrets of your destiny and still go back and sleep with two eyes closed? That you can tell the person, our family is going through an attack now. And the person says, over my dead body, as for me and my, my wife and my children, be sure that we are awake praying for you. We will pray till breakthrough comes. They will pray as if it's their own child that is going to hell. Do you have such people in your life? Woe betides a man who is alone when these seasons come. The Bible, the Bible gives us a very interesting rendition. There's no time for that now to, to check that. But... You would have read about a man in scripture who heard that his boss was going to drive him away. When he heard that his boss would drive him away, he called all the people who were owing the boss. How much do you owe? Let me reduce something. Note my face. Note my face. And when the boss drove him, he called them and said, where are you people? I scratched your back yesterday. Oh, yeah. My back is scratching me now. <laughs> Even though the reason for relationship should not be selfishness. It should be that you love them genuinely. You have to go and pray this night. And say, Lord, give me the gift of destiny covenant friends. I'm tired of general relationships. Oh, really? You don't have a child? Two years, no child? 
I'm fasting and praying with you. We are getting into this together. No, no, don't worry. I will handle my... No way. When people love you just because of money or anointing or position, and most people will, that's the, that will be the basis. Can I tell you this? When people are clapping for you before you receive it, look well. Who is clapping? Because some people are clapping for themselves through you. Oh, I'm happy that my money bank is still alive. You are healthy. Are you okay? Because I'm about to ask you for school fees. There is a building project that is going on. I can get you Panadol. I can sow a seed. Are you all right? What they are saying is my project, my fundraiser, are you alive? The day they roof that house, if you like, die on that day. And many of us need to be discerning because just because people laugh and celebrate you, you draw them to the holy of holies of your destiny. No. Put a strict spiritual immigration officer around your life that before you move from outer court to inner court, you must pass that test indeed. From inner court to the most holy place. Just because you meet someone and the person loves you, I say, my God, Apostle Joshua Selman, you preach so powerfully. In five minutes, you've told them everything about your life. Just to let you know that, in fact, my mother is a witch. It's an issue we are still dealing with now. Who asked you? Look at just five minutes. And I'm, the, are you aware that that shoe I even wore, I, I borrowed it. Come, in fact, let's sit down. And for five hours, you are by the side of your bed discussing things. And the person laughs until two, two weeks later, you find out that the person was actually looking for your enemy. It's just that he came to you. And now you open up several things about your life to your peril. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Let people qualify for access to your destiny. Don't open up the gates of your destiny to just everybody. Love everybody, but don't relate with everybody. No. Association is not by force. Choose it with respect to God's agenda and your destiny. Are we together? And beware of people who want to be your friends without changing their values. Be careful. If you come to my house and the protocol is to take off your shoes, you take off your shoes. You see that? There are people who want to come with their shoes and sit. This is just a parable, not doesn't mean literally. If I come to your life and I find out that your priority is Jesus, I must honor Jesus and it must remain so. I cannot want to create an exemption and yet want to be close to you. It doesn't work that way. Beware of people who do not respect your values and yet want relationships with you. They may be sincere, but they are dangerous people. So number one, what do you do with seasons of abundance? Build capacity. Number two, build relationships. Number three, what do you do during these seasons? Selflessly invest in blessing and transforming as many lives the third thing you do with these seasons of opportunity your seven years selflessly invest in blessing and transforming as many lives we see this in the life of david we're about to pray first samuel chapter 22 from verse 1 and 2 please first samuel chapter 22 from verse 1 and 2 the bible says david therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of adulam and when his brethren and all his father's house heard it they went there to meet him this was when david was running away from saul look at the caliber of people who came to david and everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt and everyone that was discontented they gathered themselves unto him and he became captain over them and they were with him about 400 men can you imagine the level of selflessness it takes to be captain over these people you are you can't expect anything in return from these people people who were distressed people who were in debt people who were already disenfranchised and now he became captain over them 
By the time we get to 2 Samuel chapter 23, 2 Samuel please, chapter 23, from verse 8, 2 Samuel 23 from verse 8, their names are changed. They were no longer weak men. These be the names of the mighty men whom David had. David turned weak men who were in distress, weak men who were almost in debt, and he transformed them by selflessly investing in them until their names changed to the mighty men that David had. The Tagmonite that sat in the seat, chief among the captains, watch this. It says the same was Adino, the Esnite. He lifted up his fear against 800 whom he slew one time. What mighty man. Next verse please. And after him was Eleazar the son of Dodo, the Ahohite. One of the three mighty men with David. When they defied the Philistines that were gathered together to battle. And the men of Israel were gone away. Next verse please. The Bible says he arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clave to his sword. And the Lord wrought great victory that day and the people returned after him only to the spoil. Watch this. Next verse please. And after him Shammah, the son of Agi, the Hararite. It says, and the Philistines were gathered together on, onto a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils and the people fled from the philistines we're reading to 17 watch this but he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the philistines and the lord gave him great victory remember who they were before look what david turned them to become and three of the 30 chiefs went down and came to david in the harvest time in the cave of Adullam and the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephaim. David was then in a hold and of the garrison of the Philistines in Bethlehem. And the Bible says David long and said, watch this, ah, it's good to raise men. David said, oh that I would drink of the pool of the waters of the well of Bethlehem which is at the gate. And those who he had raised said, what did you say? You said you are thirsty. You want water from Bethlehem. Watch this. And the mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, David said, you've killed too many people. What warriors? What did I make you become? Don't expect loyalty from anybody you did not invest in. Don't appear in people's future and claim a stake in their lives. There are many people today who have not invested in building anybody. You just gather successful people and you want to claim their lives. No, sir. If you were there during their dark days, they will remember you in glory. There are politicians who have gotten this right. Others got it wrong. There are men of God who have gotten this right. Others got it wrong. There are parents who have gotten this right. Others got it wrong. May you get it right. Amen. Every opportunity God gives you, invest in someone. Some of them will ignore you. Some of them will turn back. Don't worry. You will always find faithful people. Say, we remember, we have pledged our loyalty. Just because you are testy, they will pull down with people of leadership. Visionary leaders do not maintain followers. They turn those leaders, those followers to leaders. And like Dr. Miles will say of blessed memory, they will now turn the leaders into agents of change. Can I tell you this? Do not allow a generation pass without having your investment represented there. Some of these children that many of you see and push them in a bit to look for Joshua Selman, they are the next apostles you are pushing. Mighty men. It is my passion that God will think for yourself. I'm raising you for myself. That's already selfishness. That you invest in people selflessly. Can I tell you this? They may ignore you for a while, but the reality of your investment will bring them. One day they will realize that not everybody is that selfless. For someone you can start with your children. There are many people or bad, they land them outside. So those they are close to are those who fed them intellectually and spiritually and otherwise. Can 
Can I tell you this? No matter how anointed I am, no matter how blessed I am, if I go to someone today in the generation of our fathers like Baba Deboe, even if I remove a human head and fix it back as a miracle, they will thank me, but they will be on their way to redemption camp because that is the voice that grew with them. The key to transgenerational relevance is don't just impact a generation, grow with that generation. Grow with that generation. Laboriously invest in the people. They may not reward you, but invest sincerely. A day will come when the presidents of nations will be people who are fruits of your apostleship. Impact them sincerely and watch them grow. Their honor and their lifting is what will keep you up. God does not throw people. He lifts people. Everything lifted is lifted because it is connected to the ground. No matter how high a skyscraper is, it does not float. Anything that floats in the air will come down. Number one, build capacity. Number two, build strategic destiny relationships. Number three, selflessly invest in blessing and transforming as many lives. Apostle boy, you are just talking. You don't know how many children are brought to my house to raise. Almost 90% of them have become ambrobas. Don't worry. You will reap what you sow, not where you sowed. You can sow in Nigeria and reap in US. It's still your harvest. One child among the many who will do well will be equivalent to 100 children. Hallelujah. Invest in transforming as many. I heard a man of God say this. It is better to be kind than to be right. There are many times you will need to prefer kindness than being right. The pressure to prove you are right, it is nobler to pursue kindness. There are times you are wrong, but you are right, but you will still fail. Right does not always mean success. Right does not always mean victory, but kind will always mean victory. Hallelujah. Are we learning? The final thing and then we'll pray. Thank you for your patience. What do I do with my seasons of abundance? Study and carefully follow those who have maintained relevance through seasons. Study and carefully follow those who have maintained relevance through seasons. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. Did I give you a title for tonight's teaching? The law of seasons. You may want to write that down. The law of seasons. It says that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Every time I have the honor of speaking to any of our fathers or mentors or senior people, whether in ministry, in life, who have gone ahead of me, I don't approach them as Apostle Joshua Selman. I go there like a sponge like an ignorant person ready to learn wisdom and my goodness sometimes in five minutes they will tell you something that will define the next 10 years of your life let me give you an advice when you stand before greatness don't contribute listen when you stand don't go and stand before people you know they are all billionaires respectfully speaking you may not have anything yet i'm very quick you are no 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 he's he's, he's not first bank he's um, um access bank how much do you have just keep quiet whether you are right or wrong listen and learn you stand before senior fathers of faith and that no 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 you made a mistake it's acts chapter two i just read it whenever you stand before greatness minimize contribution be a listener it is the secret of receiving from the great. Sometimes what they will say, they may fail in statistics, they may misquote scriptures, don't worry. Adaptation is proof of honor. Just endure. Be looking for what they are saying that can bless them. Mama, how were you able to raise 11 children and the least among them is a professor today? Mama may not be able to speak English. Endure. Just listen to what she's saying. There is a formula that through the frailty of our communication will drop to your hands. When you receive it, you can change a people. 
Can I tell you this? Every time results are consistent, it means they happen by laws. Consistent results are proof that you have gained mastery. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to wear.